also the core experiences in ourself, our real core beliefs about who we are, and core beliefs about how the world is. So let's just go through these five things. It's a way of just hopefully giving you a sense of um, that maybe this kind of framework will soften our sense of self up in relation to each other. So the five heaps. Well, the first heap uh, is, is form, rupa. Uh, so really, as we know, one of the great uh, precious things about finding ourselves in these conditions is that we are embodied. So this body gives us uh, capacity to uh, for all these other uh, heaps to to manifest. It's a kind of core aspect of uh, of what it means to be human, to be alive in a body. So we have uh, well immediately when we recognize we're in the body, we recognize that, well, we're in movement the whole time. We have the ability to um, bring things together, but also in our movement, we're changing the whole time. We're not fixed. We have what's described plasticity. We're vibrating with energy. We have temperature. We have movement. We have contour. We have change within us, as well as a sense of continuity. And all these things come out of this body, this form. <coughs> so to really get a sense of ourselves as Rupa, is quite a key, uh, one of the, well, it's one of the five heaps. So to really know that we are embodied and that we can lean into these uh, experiences in, when in relationship to each other, can be really helpful. So it's just as a, a key suggestion. So you may be finding yourself up in your head, spinning out into thoughts and ideas about what I'm talking about, whether you agree or disagree, whether you're bored, whether you're bored with somewhere else, whether you're whatever. But how about just getting a sense of your backside on your seat? You know, that is also part of being here. And we can kind of lose that sense of being embodied here and now. And it seems to be that when we're more in touch with Rupa, this aspect, this uh, first heat, this primary heat, it actually then starts to free us. One, it makes us more present here and now. We can be more able to engage with each other simply by knowing that our backside is on the sea. It's a wonder, but it's an important tool for engagement, for, uh, for real uh, aliveness to each other. So that's the first uh, aspect. So because we have Rupa form, what we next have is um, Samya or perception. So this form, through the form we have ideas, nodes, etc. So we have these perceptions coming in because we are embodied. So again, just being sensitive to all these different uh, sense impressions, sensory contacts, there's a really important part in being with ourselves, but also being in relation to others. I think particularly recognizing when we're in relation to another, how much uh, how much mental activity, these mental impressions are coming in to our experience. They can have quite a strong um, impact on our experience. So it can be good to, again, just broaden out from the mental impressions to see what else is going on. Just noticing texture, color, the real sounds, the intonation in somebody's uh, voice, they're speaking. All of these things help to uh, fill out this sense of being here alongside others. So that's Sanya. On the basis of Sanya, we have Vedana. 
So feelings. So feelings aren't in this context, it's not talking about emotional feeling, it's simply Vedana in the sense of as soon as we have uh, made contact, we perceive something, we immediately clock that it's either pleasant or unpleasant. We're either attracted or repulsed by the experience. So this uh, tendency or the knowing of Vedana is again it's a very primary experience. So we will had this running alongside all perception the whole time. And what we do with Vedana is also very important, very, um, uh, a large part of being within these heaps, uh, being these, these five heaps. So for instance, I'm aware it's quite, getting quite warm in here. Uh, so it might just be me, but it also might be so I'm starting to kind of feel slightly less comfortable than I was earlier. So that uncomfortable feeling then is starting me to kind of feel uh, in my body um, a slight kind of tensing up, uncomfortable, maybe should do something about this, etc. But Vedana, the unpleasant sensation is kind of a, uh, part of my experience. And I can use that and where it tends to, uh, where it is seen, is in vinyana, which is consciousness. So we have this uh, basic contact, and we have the perceptions arising, and what we do with that, with all that material, is that we start to filter it, translate it, interpret it. We start to do things with our faith, their material. And this is very important to get hold of this when we're starting to come into relationship with others. What is it that we're doing with our consciousness in relation to others and in relation to ourselves? Just getting a sense of this as a direct experience. And finally, what we'll find is that a lot of the uh, responses that we're having are actually coming out quite often unnoticed. They're habitual responses to our feelings. All this editing, denying, grasping, moving towards, this is really, a lot of this is based upon our habits, which are invisible to us, often invisible to us. So to engage with the five heaps, if we can do that in relation, uh, in relation to us, really in relation to others, we're given this great gift to really see how insubstantial, impermanent, and often unsatisfactory our experience is. It leads us back to really uh, noticing that we can, by really seeing these uh, different aspects of these five heaps of playing ourselves, we can start to soften up this sense of being a me, a permanent me, to recognize that all of this is fluid, is in, in movement, is in play the whole time. And there's no side of that. I mean, I find that. I don't know why I'm not going, wow, really? Because <laughs> that feels so kind of important to me that, it's, that it is, there is nothing else here apart from these five hoops. And this is the material, this is the kind of raw material that we're working with in our ethical life, in our spiritual practice. We're working. With this in within this territory, so when we're in communication, we might clearly see more this uh, our tendencies to identify with particular parts of our experience. 
So, for instance, say, you know, I carry quite a lot of tension, uh, particularly when my shoulders. So, uh, when I'm not aware of that, then I become identified that I'm the person with tight shoulders, and that obviously means something or gripping under something, etc. So, so, you get this sort of build these narratives around uh, sensory experience and become that is who I am. I'm a tense person. So, um, identification with any particular aspect of our experience, even grasping after particular aspects of our experience, trying to cling on to these different arising and ever changing conditions. We are, what we're trying to do there is trying to create permanence, substantiality, and ongoing gratification. So we're working against the, the, uh, these three marks of conditioned existence. So the five heaps are really uh, starting to show us where we are protecting a view, where we're bolstering ourselves in, in particular ways, where we're bolstering an identity. And the practice of ethics is really starting to explore is this something helpful to maintain is these conditions uh, conducive to release to liberation or are they actually binding us gripping us into a particular unhelpful shape so the invitation within communication within practice is to recognize where we clean and simply let go or at least soften soften in the mind soften in the body and see what happens but that act of softening is actually starts to bring in more choice it doesn't mean that we just discard everything that we've ever thought and value but it creates some choice around recognizing that which is binding us and that which is leading us to a more open, spacious sense of being. So the dilemmas of ethics that you've been looking at, we've been looking at over the last few weeks, is really trying to see that when exploring our personal experience, the questions that we have around our experience, is the real important means that we have in, in relation to each other that will open us into insights about the nature of, of being, the nature of our, uh, the reality of, of our being. And these insights, one of the things that happen, can happen, that can kind of limit us, is that we can imagine that, well, if I don't grip onto who I am in a particular way, if I just start to soften who I am, who I think I am, what will happen? I'll just kind of fall into this black hole of confusion, chaos, whatever, however we picture it. But what the Buddha taught was actually insights, liberation is something that comes very gradually. So what we can find hopefully reassuring is that it's said, the Buddha explained or described these small insights that come moment by moment kind of, uh, it's unlikely they will destroy us, but they will start to open and release us into a more expansive open place of being. And the description of insight leading the mood towards liberation is of, uh, it's as if you step down into an ocean on a very gentle movement from the shore down into the ocean. So each step will take you deeper into the ocean of liberation. And all we need to do is engage with the process of exploring our experience softening and releasing, making creative choices on the basis of the ethics, on the basis of the precepts, and trust 
that is simply opening, uh, releasing, trusting that. Sense. We will find ourselves in a moment actually of responsiveness of, of love as we as at the, at the base of our experience. We will find love if we simply keep open. So, this is the, the part that leads from these small shifts in our grip on who we think we are will gradually. Thank you. 